howdy howdy i just wanted to pop in and make sure that everyone is staying very vigilant when it comes to propaganda that is going around i have been watching a lot of it happening uh especially regarding a lot of the cabinet picks for the trump administration so um First off, let me just, I'm going to provide both these links uh, in the description so you can go read the articles at your leisure. Um, so the first one I want to talk about is how it's been reported, widely reported, that Musk has had all kinds of secret talks with Vladimir Putin. Um, that is something that's been going around. It's been rumored that... Um, that Elon took part in a phone call with, between Trump and Zelensky. I do not know if that one is true or not. I, I don't know on that one. I'm only speaking to the ones that I'm covering here. There is statements being made that there's been all these secret meetings between Putin and between um, Musk. And that's not the case. I do remember... And I reported, I think I reported, maybe I wasn't doing the show then. I do remember, though, um, reading a news article about how Musk was going to be talking to Putin. Uh, but much of their conversation was about space and stuff related to, to the, uh, the rocket ship and stuff. Um, not, it wasn't, he wasn't there for that. Now... Uh, I've got an article here from the Moscow Times, right? I was going to bring up one from the Wall Street Journal, but uh, I'm not a paid subscriber, so I couldn't see the article. So I got one from the Moscow Times here, independent news from Russia, right? A U.S. billionaire Elon Musk held secret talks with Russian President Vladimir Putin throughout the war in Ukraine as his initial support for Kiev appeared to shift in Moscow's favor, the Wall Street Journal reported Thursday, citing several anonymous current and ex-U.S., European, and Russian officials, right? A ton of anonymous, peop anonymous people, right? The private conversations reportedly addressed personal topics, business, and geopolitical tensions and took place between October 2022 and he, or when he proposed a controversial peace deal and into this year. One current and one former intelligence source were cited as saying that the contacts with Putin continued as Musk began increasingly criticizing U.S. military aid to Ukraine and endorsed former President Donald Trump's latest bid for office. Wall Street Journal noted that Musk's alleged engagement with Putin comes amid Trump's proposal to cut a deal over the war in Ukraine. The newspaper also reported that the billionaire was having regular conversations with high-level Russians, including Putin's first deputy chief of staff, uh, Sergei Kirienko, amid pressure from the Kremlin on Musk's business and implicit, implicit threats against him. They, the U.S. government, don't love it, one source was quoted as saying, referring to the reported Musk-Putin contacts, but adding that the Biden administration has not yet raised alerts over possible security breaches. Okay, you know damn well if there was something to this, they would be all over it. This is the whole Russia Gate. This, this is Russia Gate 2.0, I guess. They would be all over it if they had something, but they don't. So let's see what they, meaning Russia, has to say on all these phone calls. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov told Wall Street Journal that Musk and Putin had only one phone call in which they discussed space as well as current and future technologies. The billionaire, who did not respond to the newspaper's request for comment, said in October 2022 that he had discussed space with Putin in April of 2021. Um, Wall Street Journal reported that Putin asked Musk not to activate his Starlink satellite internet service over Taiwan as a favorite Chinese leader Xi Jinping. Starlink does not currently provide service to the island nation. The Kremlin, later on Friday, denied the allegations in Wall Street Journal's report, saying it's all untrue. Now, uh, 
It says, and I'll just finish up here. It says, Putin had only one conversation with Musk, it was reported, and it happened before 2022, Peskov told journalists at a daily briefing. They talked about visionary technologies, technological solutions for the future, which is what it was reported on that they talked about back when it happened. I remember when it happened. I'm pretty sure I was doing the show at that time, and I'm positive I reported on it. So... Now, this isn't the only only one, right? Uh, there was another instance here of of recent. Um, and I meant to bring it up, and then I, uh, I, I forgot. <laughs> so, let me bring up this one, and I'll include this link uh, in the description as well. Ah. Oh, I can't. Hang on. Hang on a minute. I have to pick another link. I can't pick Reuters because I don't have a subscription. And I can see it if I go in incognito mode, but since this window isn't in incognito, I can't make the two into one. You know what I mean? So, we'll go with, uh, we'll go with AP. I'll leave this link. Iranian official met with Musk in a possible step to ease tensions with Trump. Okay. Iran successfully sought a meeting with Elon Musk, according to a U.S. official, in a series of steps that appeared aimed at easing tensions with President-elect Donald Trump. Now, I actually thought that this could have been true, and I thought that was good news. I would think this would be good news, by the way. Not bad news. Iran's U.N. Ambassador Amir Saeed Irvani, Irvani met with Musk, <clears throat> a Trump ally named this week, to advise, uh, advise his administration on ways to cut the federal government on Monday in New York, according to a U.S. official briefed on the meeting by a foreign colleague. The official said he had been informed that the discussion covered a variety of topics, most notably Iran's nuclear program, its support for anti-Israel groups throughout the Middle East, and prospects for improved relations with the United States. The, the official, who spoke on condition of anonymity to discuss a non-U.S. governmental meeting, said no immediate decisions were taken by either side. The official said the Iranians sought the meeting with Musk, the world's richest man, and that it did not take place at the Iranian mission to the UN. The Trump transition scene would not confirm or deny the meeting, which was first reported by the New York Times. Um, the American people re-elected President Trump because they trust him to lead our country and restore peace through strength around the world. When he returns to the White House, he will take the necessary action to do just that, Caroline Leavitt, a spokesperson for the Trump transition, said in a statement. <clears throat> However, Iran's state-run IRNA news agency reported on Saturday that Iran's foreign ministry spokesman, Esmail Baghai, I'm sure I got that wrong, denied the country's UN ambassador Amir Saeed Irvani met with Musk in New York and expressed surprise at the extensive media coverage by American outlets on this matter. Now, there should be a lot of clues in that statement, okay? Iran's outreach comes as Trump has been announcing picks for key foreign policy posts, including Senator Marco, Mark, uh, Marco Rubio and then blah, blah. But you get the point, right? So what they are trying to do is they are trying to sway public opinion about Elon Musk. They are trying to make a monster out of him. They are basically, it's, it's, you can call it um, Russiagate, Irangate, and whatever else they can think of uh, to, to come up with. Now, there's another bit of news that came out today. And uh, I, I want to uh, I want to try to point this out as being false before it grows any legs here. Trump transition team compiling list of current and former U.S. military officers for possible court martial. Now, I'm not saying whether or not Trump will will really follow through and do this. What I am saying 
that this current report right now, it's propaganda. <laughs> They're trying to do everything they can to keep people in fear about, oh my goodness, what if Trump actually takes charge, you know? Says here, the Trump transition team is compiling a list of senior, current, and former U.S. military officers who were directly involved in the withdrawal from Afghanistan and exploring whether they could be court-martialed for their involvement, according to a U.S. official and a person familiar with the plan. Officials working on the transition are considering creating a commission to investigate the 2021 withdrawal from Afghanistan, including gathering information about who was directly involved in the decision-making for the military, how it was carried out, and whether the military leaders could be eligible for charges as serious as treason, the U.S. official and person with knowledge of the plan said. Okay. They're taking it very seriously, the person with knowledge of the plan said. Well, this would be good. If it's true, that's great. That's incredible. That's what needs to happen, right? But not so fast. <clears throat> the Trump, Trump transition team did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Matt Flynn, a former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Counter-Narcotics and Global Threats, is helping lead the effort, the sources said. It is being framed as a review of how the U.S. first got into the war in Afghanistan and how the U.S. ultimately withdrew. Matt Flynn has nothing to do with the Trump transition team, much less leading any review concerning military justice matters, said Mark S. Zaid, Flynn's attorney. In a statement, Zaid said that no one has sought out Mr. Flynn's views on this hypothetical legal scenario. NBC did reach out to multiple officials on the Trump transition team about this story. Listen here. The sources apparently pushing this story appear to be your typical selfish Washington, D.C. insiders seeking to gain better positioning for their own administration jobs, said an individual with knowledge of the campaign. Um, it's pretty much telling you right there that at least the involvement that has been claimed here is untrue. Now, I'm not saying that Trump isn't doing that, that Trump isn't going to do that, not at all, because that sounds like something he would do, and that sounds like something that he should do, to be quite honest. <clears throat> but there is a lot of these stories going around, and you're going to continue to see a lot of this type of stuff, and I don't know what their goal is. The election is over. The election's long over. The only thing that I can think that they are doing is trying to instill as much fear and discontent in the American public and hoping that, I don't know, I, I don't know. I don't know what, what it is they're after because they damn well don't want a civil war. They damn well don't want a civil war. You know, there's a whole lot of people that made sure that they got out and voted, okay, especially for Red Team, a whole lot of people. But if you look at the amount of people that voted, right, and you look at the number of American people in this country, you still got a whole hell of a lot more people out there that isn't represented by a vote. And I can guarantee you that you're talking about the silent majority there. And I can tell you that even though they may not have felt compelled to get up and go out and vote, I guarantee you they align much more with Trump's ideas and his strategy. I don't know what these individuals that are putting out this propaganda are really intending to do. It would seem like they're trying to, to fuel something here. Be mindful of it. And even if the news tickles your ear, even if it makes you feel good about what's being said, be critical of it. You know, I, I don't have, personally, I don't have an issue with Elon talking to Putin. I don't have an issue with Elon talking to Iran. 
I don't. Why should I? That, that would be very naive to think that that would be a bad thing. <clears throat> it's in, in my opinion, it would be incredible if something was done about the disastrous pullout of Afghanistan and even more so something done about why we were lied to to be there in the first place. That would be great. And that absolutely tickles my ears and makes me feel warm and fuzzy. But until I see it, I ain't believing it. Whether that comes from blue team, red team, yellow team, green team. I ain't going to believe it until I see it. Be careful of the propaganda. It's thick and not going to stop anytime soon. Shalom.